morning everybody. So, we were discussing about the preloading of the uh, ball bearing and we have seen that there are different methods of preloading and we have also seen that without preloading your ball will create lot of noise and wear and uh, other problem and your bearing will fail at the later stage. So, preloading is one of the important uh, parameters of the ball bearing for a application in the micro machining center or the high precision bearing systems. So, we have seen in the last class that there is one of the method is called the sp uh, spring preload by which you are applying a preload by means of a spring and we have seen also that it will accommodate slight misalignment because of the thermal growth of the uh, component mostly it is a shaft. So, in this particular case moving here and there will not make much difference within a certain uh, particular part and then let us discuss this is the second is the solid preload. Now, what is the solid preload that instead of a spring what we are using here that we are using one type of uh, nut here. So, this particular nut will actually uh, fix this particular uh, inner rest or outer rest depending on our application and so that you can actually get the angle or the measure measure contact angle between the uh, races and the ball. So, what is that that you can actually give a uh, motion by means of a spacer or the locking mechanism for applying an accelerator. So, this is called spacer or the locking mechanism because it is a thread. So, you actually rotate it and it will push the inner rest or outer rest to the uh, different direction. Why it is good? Because it is a high stiffness and design is straightforward. Because when you are adding a spring at that time you have to actually spring also you have to preload little bit otherwise by changing the stiffness of the spring you may get a different type of uh, preloading at the later stage, but here it is a solid thing. So, it is very very good in terms of stiffness because now it will not allow even a slight movement here and there that was possible depending on the stiffness of the spring, but that is not happening here in this case and design is straightforward because here what you have to create you have to create one thread on the shaft only that is enough to get this thing done, but if you want to do the same thing for the spring loading. At that time what you have to create a cavity also then you have to take the dimension of those part because everything is internal part and here that is not the thing. So, that is advantage of this particular part, but problem is that whatever the advantage of the spring loaded that is a problem here because change in the preloading due to expansion and contraction with thermal variation uh, thermal uh, with the thermal variation and the wear. Now, what is happening here that if the same thing happens here that there is a thermal growth of the components. But in the spring will uh, that case spring will take care of those things, but here nothing is uh, there which is flexible like a spring. So, in that case it will not create it will not be able to uh, compensate as minor changes in the dimension and your system will create a problem because if there is a expansion or contraction with the thermal and wear at that time your system will be in a more tight situation that means either preload, preload will increase or preload will decrease. So, that is the situation of this part, but here what you are getting you are getting a stiffness right. So, now it is up to you that which method is more suitable for particular application where you are putting this particular bearing in the spindle. So, depending on that you have to select either a spring preload or the solid preload. Right. So, what is the magnitude of preload is important here. So, angular contact bearing must be preloaded in order to provide the axial and radial capability that we have seen. So, now there are three ways that means light preload, medium preload and heavy preload. So, we have seen also that light preload that means you are uh, not giving more preloading, heavy preload and the excessive preloading is there. So, if you are talking about light preload then it allows the maximal speed and the less stiffness here because now you are not pushing the ball too much into the races. So, at that time you have a less contact there. So, less contact you can go with high speed because high speed you are getting because you are not getting a contact con no contact that means less amount of heat generation and the less friction right. Then, but stiffness is less because now it is not firmly gripped with the inner rest and outer rest. So, you have to compromise with the stiffness. So, that is not good thing, but here you can go with the high speed. So, that is the advantage right. So, light preloaded bearings are often used in a very high speed application where cutting loads are also very light and top RPM is needed. Now, when you are talking about the machining of a plastic or the some type of polymer material at that time we know that we are not actually going to get a very very high amount of forces that means your stiffness is not a issue that level less stiffness that means it does not mean there is no stiffness. There is a stiffness, but it is not enough to 
sustain the forces by the metal cutting. But if your application is some type of we have seen lot of application microfluidics where polymers are being machined by a micro machining center. So, at that time what is our ob objective that here what we are talking about that our uh, forces or cutting forces are very very light in this case because we are cutting a polymer material or some other material similar to plastic and then RPM is very very high because we have to maintain the productivity also because if you go with a high RPM you can give go high feed rate and when you are giving high feed rate within a short time you can cut a very very long cut in the uh, machining part. So, that is the advantage of this part and the, uh, that is the thing for light preloading. When you are talking about the heavy preloading it allows less speed because now your ball is actually firmly gripped between the inner edge and outer edge. If you go with a high RPM and this thing then again we know that there is a high heat generation and friction and wear and that will create a problem at the later stage, but you will get a high stiffness correct. So, now you have to sacrifice the speed to a certain limit that you cannot rotate more than 30,000 or uh, 40,000 kind of thing, but you can get the stiffness. So, if your application is within that part where you want to cut some metallic component and your stiffness is very important there because you do not want to damage the system. If you are not getting a speed then it mostly actually create a problem with the tool only, but if you actually go with a certain uh, metal cutting with a, a light preload then it will damage the system because you, are, you do not have enough stiffness in the machine tool. So, it is better to go with this particular part, but there is a limitation of the uh, speed also. So, in medium is in between these two that you have to play around to find the optimum setting for the particular application. Right. So, now what is the duplex bearing? So, now we know that in machine tool must be capable of resisting deflection from multiple direction with maintain while maintaining both rotation and positional accuracy. Right. So, we are talking about both the thing axial uh, loading and the radial loading in both the cases. So, what is going to happen here? Now, consider that we have a shaft here and this is the one bearing located at the rear side and this is at the front side and our cutting tool is located here at this location correct. Now, you are doing machining with this part. Now, you have a one set of bearing at the front and another set of bearing at the later stage. When you do cutting with this particular part you are doing a means depth uh, going down also in the material and then you are cutting by this. So, you are cutting doing some slot cutting or slot machining. So, at that time what is happening that when you have only two bearings here at that time the load whatever you are getting here the maximum load you will get at this location because front loaded bearing is mostly more loaded because of the location near to this part, but you will get loading here also and all the load whether it is axial load or radial load that will be shared by the two bearings only. Correct. Instead of two bearing let us add one more set here. Now, what is going to happen this this all the load will be shared by the under one more set of the bearing. So, per bearing amount of load is less correct. So, more you add the bearing more there will be the distribution of the forces or the uh, uh, reduction of the load per unit of the uh, ball bearing. So, that is very important here. So, that is why we uh, we have to mount more than one bearing, so that your load will be distributed among the more number of bearings. So, that is called the duplex bearing. Right. So, what is the duplex bearing? The mount several angular contact bearings to provide the required load carrying capacity. It is load sharing and the high stiffness, because now we know that our shaft is connecting at the two different locations. Correct. Right. So, this is the one thing, this is the second thing. Now, high stiffness is important because now it is fixed at two location only then stiffness is less, but if you add one more here then it is grip at the two locations here at this location and this location. Right. So, your shaft is firmly grip between the two bearing. So, now you will get a high stiffness and the load is also sharing because earlier the load was divided by 2 only. Now, it is a load is 
divided by 4. So, now per unit load will be less in this particular case. So, that is very very good advantage compared to the single row bearing. Right. So, this is the thing that instead of a single bearing, so you can use the duplex bearing. Duplex bearing does not mean that you are using two separate bearings, but it is a common use single unit in such a way that the preloading and everything is designed within the bearing. So, that we will see that how those things are there. The duplex bearings have the high radial and the radial uh, uh, radial and the axial rigidity that is obvious because we are using uh, two bearings in place of a single bearing here. And duplex bearings are matched pair of bearing with a inbuilt preload, right. So, here what we are doing that we are adding that preload between uh, before we put this thing in application because we know that for this particular bearing is going to use at which location. So, these are the specifically made bearings for the specific applications. Right. The inner rest or the outer rest face have the ground uh, have been ground to a precise dimension known as the preload offset. So, now this is the duplex bearing. Now, what is this thing that when you are uh, fabricating or when you are manufacturing this particular bearing at that time itself you are giving this preload offset. So, whatever we are looking at here now you can see this how inner rest whatever we are looking at so there is no clearance in this right. no clearance or offset. Correct? Now, if you see the same thing in the outer rest that is a total preload offset one offset is given there. Now, we use the solid preloading here. So, now when you are putting this nut into this particular part then what is going to happen that it will push this outer rest and then you continue then you will not get any type of clearance here. Now, clearance is filled and other than that if you see this particular part the contact angle if you see this contact angle is 0 here right because we know that contact angle is measurement between these two axes. So, this is the contact angle alpha, but it is no contact angle because it is mostly considered as a uh, roller bearing only. So, here what is happening here that when you are pushing this thing then you will get a contact between these two parts because you are pushing from here. So, you will get a contact here and this contact and you will get one. Uh, line passing through the contact between the inner rest, outer rest and the ball. So, you will get a angle also. So, this is the way you can actually get the uh, preload offset and when you push this the inner rest or outer rest depending upon where you are putting this preloading and then you can get the things done. So, this is the duplex bearing. Yeah. This offset corresponds to the rings uh, axial movement when a specific axial preload is applied. So, when you are putting this axial preload at that time this offset will be matched or it will be completed and you can get the firm contact between the bearings. So, when the bearings are clamped together at assembly the offset faces upward and establish a permanent rigid preload in the bearing side. So, this is the permanent. Now, when you remove this particular part at that time it may loosen bit little bit here and there depending on the what is the total stiffness of this particular bearing and then this particular thing will create a very very high permanent uh, preload for a certain application. So, now you are not worried about the uh, system where you are getting the radial load or the axial load during the operation. So, what are the different type of mountings are there? So, this is one particular thing is called face to face or X configuration. Now, if you see this particular graph the same thing is here. Now, if you see this part that when you are pushing your outer rest into this direction, now if you see this particular uh, uh, contact angle, this contact angle is 0 and this all axis are matching with a this vertical line. So, when you are moving in this particular direction out outer rest at that time your contact between the inner rest, outer rest and ball is following this line. So, now if you follow this actually this configuration is called the x. So, now if you see this all axis are moving in this part. So, that is why it is called the x configuration or face to face configuration. So, what is this thing let us see right. So, bearing mounted are um, bearing are mounted face to face. So, this is what we are uh, looking at this time. The outer faces are relieved in this configuration. So, relieved means that means we are actually uh, pushing or we are working with the outer rest only where we are providing axial loading for the direction in this part. So, this is again the same direction in the color graph. When the outer races are claimed together the relief clearance is eliminated resulting in the correct preloading. 
right so here it is right now it was not pillared you can see that there is a some radial play is available so when you are pushing this part here at the time you are getting the motion you are getting the when you are pushing this your contact will occur here and when your ball will move in the it will happen here also so these are the contact so when you are in this case so this is moving in this so it will move in the opposite direction so you will get the uh, direction or the radial uh, preloading in this particular way right so bearing pair is capable of withstanding both axial and the radial loading so now it everything depends on this particular angle which what is this angle which is created here so we know that higher is the angle mostly we go with the axial loading and the lower is the angle then we are actually more focusing on the radial loading correct another one is the back to back or o configuration now here what we are doing that instead of pushing the uh, outer rest now we are pushing the inner rest correct so now whatever the way we have given the same preloading offset but now it is on the inner rest now this preloading uh, offset is here but there is no offset here at this location correct so now what we are doing that we are actually threading the shaft and then this particular thing will actually push this material when you are pushing this part in this direction what is happening that this will push this shaft so this particular inner rest will move in this direction when it is moving in this direction you have a support from this also at this location correct so at that location actually push this this inner rest in this direction so you will get a contact at four different location on the two bearings right so when it is pushing here this is moving in this direction right so this will move in this direction so this when it is moving in this direction so it will create a contact here and this ball will move in this it will create a contact here right so this is for this particular bearing and we know that this side is completely blocked here so when you are pushing here it will push this particular inner rest in this direction so it will create a contact here so because of this contact ball is also moving in this direction and it will create contact here right so in that way you will get the two double contact in earlier case it was the contacting point was the from the top side so it was moving in this direction so it was creating contact here and here so contact line was like this correct but here it is in the other direction so now you have contact here here and here and here so at that time it will create a o shape so it is called the o configuration or the back to back slide so what is the difference that in earlier case we were relieving the outer rest but here we are relieving the inner rest suitable for most application provides good accuracy in the rigidity in this particular case so that is advantage of using this particular uh, back to back or the o configuration another one is called the tandem or the dt configuration so in earlier case we have seen that there were two different ways that and one was the this way cross way and another one was the circular way or type of things but here what is happening that we are getting both the things so either it is like this or this or it is a uh, this or this so this both the things are called the tandem so now if you see this particular part so this is that bearing now here the total preload is given at this location and this location also both the location we are giving preload right so this is the preload we here is one is there and this is the under preload is given now you have to provide a thrust force here in this direction correct so when you provide a thrust force what is going to happen this particular bearing will try to contact here and here that is we know that from which direction we are pushing it down and then this whole thing will move so this both thing will move in this direction correct so this particular uh, inner rest that inner rest will shift to this location and this inner rest will shift to this location right so both the things are moving and then you are what you are getting that you are getting in tandem so now the contact angles are in same direction in both the cases so that is why it is called the tandem configuration correct right in many cases two or three bearings are placed near the spindle nose that is on the front side of the spindle now consider this is the spindle location so then you are putting two or more than two also with a pair mounted near the 
real spindle shaft. So, now consider this is the spin, uh, cutting tool. So, this is called the this particular thing is called the spindle nose near the spindle nose so whatever it is showing here and then you extend this particular shaft and you wrote reach to this location. So, this is called the rear spindle of the zero spindle shaft. So, this is at the other end right. So, because we have to provide the set of bearing on both the side front side as well as the uh, rear side also. Right. It can handle heavily unidirectional thrust loads. Now, this is one of the problems of this particular loading. Let us complete this also. It does not allow forces in both the direction unless other pair of the bearing are used on the spindles are facing the opposite direction. Now, what does it mean? Now, you consider this thing that we are providing thrust force from here to fill up this particular gap. Correct? So, thrust force is continuously from the, this direction only. Correct? Now, you consider that is my it is called the unidirectional thrust load. Why it is unidirectional thrust load? Now, consider that your spindle is mounted here and now it is a drilling operation. So, you are doing drilling operation here, then you to create a force in this direction. So, if it is in forces in this direction, what is going to happen? That again you are getting the problem here. That means, you are preloading whatever force you are getting thrust load here, whatever thrust load you are putting here. If your machining force is more than this particular thrust load, then what is going to happen that you are again going to come into this location. That means, whatever this preloading is there, that preloading will be sacrificed because of this excess loading in the opposite direction of this. So, that is why that your all loading should be from this part only. So, whatever you are want to do that thing, that means you have to provide full loading from this direction. That is the only thing that is the thrust load. But if you want to do in this way, that is if you are getting the forces from both the direction, that means that you have to get this thing done in the other way. That means the other facing bearing should have opposite direction. So, this is the one head bearing. Suppose you consider this is the one side of bearing, then other side of bearing whatever you are talking that those bearings should have this configuration that is from the other side. So, now you consider for getting this particular part what you are doing that you are doing force from this direction that is a thrust force. Right? So, this is the one set of bearings that is on the one side that is because of the thrust force in this direction, but you, if you are getting the forces from the both the direction then whatever is the rear side or first side other bearing it should have thrust force from this direction. So, whatever this tandem there is that there should be this thing should be opposite to each other. If this uh, angle is in this direction then other angle should be in the opposite direction that is on face to face side or it is on the opposite side then it will take care of both the side of loading without any problem. So, if you are loading from the one direction only, so it is better to go with a unidirectional thrust load that is mostly we talk about the drilling operation. Because after drilling once drilling is op, uh, completed then when you are removing your uh, drill bit from the machine surface, it will not encounter more forces here because it already material is removed. But when you are doing a cutting of this different type of other material, when you are doing milling operation and other things at that time you may get the radial uh, forces also and radial force will create a problem here for the later operation. So, that is the things which we can we have to consider when you want to use the tandem design for a bearing application. Right. So, now let us consider how you are mounting this uh, particular bearing in a, a motor spindle. So, this is the motor spindle with tandem bearing pairs and a spring preloading. So, this is the complete uh, cross section of a uh, spindle where we have mounted the uh, bearings also. It is in tandem bearing pair and there is a spring which is used for preloading of that. Now, this particular thing you consider that our spindle is located as uh, tool is located this side and this is the tool holder and this is the part and this is the on the rear side of the things. So, we are mounting uh, uh, one pair of tandem bearing here, one additional bearing here and one pair of tandem bearing at this particular end of the shaft. So, that is what is there and spring we are using suppose we consider this is the spring which we are using for a uh, preloading of that and here also we are using spring for preloading at this location.
right so what is happening here that when motor spindle experience temperature rise due to bearing heat or the motor losses at that there is a thermal growth of the spindle shaft because now this is the things which is rotating at a extremely high rpm and when there is a heating and the motor losses there is a thermal growth of the shaft so what is going to happen because of that inner rest is forced into the bearing because now whenever there is a thermal growth the inner rest will try to force into the bearing part so these are the inner rest whatever we are looking at this location that will try to move in the bearing side and when there is that you will actually increase the preload because now contact will be further increase or aggressive and there is a rapid failure of the bearing so what is happening in this particular case that once this part is done then what you have to do that you have to create one type of floating housing so mount the rear spindle bearing in a floating housing with a springs right so now how does it will help help in this our case that when there is a thermal growth of the shaft what is going to happen if everything is fixed now you consider that this is the shaft fixed from both the sides and now you heat the shaft so after heating the shaft what is going to happen that it will expand so what is going to because now both the things are fixed then that means it will bend something like this in this way or it will bend in this way correct so bending will happen and once the bending will happen your system will completely fail because it is not able to accommodate this additional movement of the shaft now consider the same thing here now what you are doing that you are fixing only one end let the other end open and then you heat it so now what is going to happen that it will it is no problem in there because still you can maintain it is not increasing in terms of the Uh, diameter but it will increase the length wise so that's why we are putting a floating house rear spindle so here what we are doing we are providing some space here so that whenever there is a expansion or the growth of the spindle shaft and because of this particular spring small amount of expansion will not create any problem at the later stage so whatever thermal growth is there or temperature increase because of the different different regions your full spindle system will not create any problem at the later stage or during the operation so that will be taken care by this particular floating house so let us discuss this particular floating house uh, things in the next class and let me stop it here thank you very much